Hello, all you beautiful stars. Courtney here with Stars of the Morning Light. And we again have Alexander, the ganja shaman. His link to his new YouTube is below in the description. Please go over there and subscribe. Yes. And this episode is going to be great because originally when Alex was here, we were talking about individual numerology when I believe we're going to be talking more about the end of 2023 into 2024 numerology and the energies that will be going on. So Alex, thank you for doing this for us. Oh yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, yeah, I love to, it seems like the numbers are correlating with each year. So it's good for people to know what they're working with and what they need to be focused on. So the energy, so they can manage through the energy more um, easier, you know? Yes, I, Alex, with your first one, I'm a three this year, and I was thinking, I, I haven't forgotten it. Every time I'm kind of not using my voice the way I'm supposed to, I, I, it's like I have a Alex in my, in my ear going, Courtney, it's your year three. And I wanted to ask you, you're year eight, aren't you? Yes, I'm in the year eight person year eight so it's a combination of the seven of the universal year and the eight so it's a balance with the spirituality and the material world you need to balance in those two so focus on the material world but don't um, forget about the spiritual realm you know it has to be a balance balance is key do not be too much of one side otherwise it's not going to go good but due to i being in the eight then i can concentrate on the material stuff but if you're not in the eight and you're in another one, then you cannot, because the universal year seven is not about material. It's about slowing down and focusing on yourself, doing the inner work, having the reflection, maybe do a spiritual base, um, um, how do you say, practice, or um, do, doing some deeper learning. So that's what it has to do with the seven, more in the spiritual learning, uncovering stuff looking through things and the eight is more about standing in your power focus on the business type ideas um power financial state wealth that has to do with the eight so it's a bit different alex what year for the collective is it that numerology wise what are we in oh this year is in a seven year and seven year it's a very high spiritual year 2023 is a seven and it's a, mostly a time for um, reflection and people are going to be stepping back and checking what they're doing is actually nourishing for themselves, um, reflecting on themselves, their family, um, wanting to do some deeper learning, uncovering stuff, going to seek something new seeking wisdom seeking knowledge so that's it has to do with uh, the self also a lot of people can see i will want to go take time to be a retreat going to nature um go on an adventure um alone to connect with nature so that's what it has to do with the seven i can go deeper with it here with the seven um what does the seven universal year mean this is a vital year to take a collective pause as we prepare for a massive reset. Um, the diffuse of the energy of the seven beacons us to go inward, quiet down, slow down, and sit with ourselves to study, analyze, ask questions, and peel our onions as we contemplate the bigger questions. Deep shadows rise to the surface, both collectively and individually. The universal year seven is both spiritual and scientific along with tapping in our intuition there's a drive to research find and analyze data and quantify knowledge and information financial gain however is not the core of the seven universal year no we cannot just go with the business as usual or place a band-aid um, on our fractured economic system however putting focus on money above else would bring the harder lessons or fail in 2023. Only if people that are in the person year eight, then you can focus on that. Otherwise, it's not going to go good. It has to be a balance of both. 
but due to the age being about financial state, okay, then you can focus on it for the people that are in a person year eight. And starting in 2024, we will enter a three year push time of a global transition and transformation. Next year, the eight university year is where money and power take front seat. Before then, the university year renders us to make us wise and spiritually mature decision. Um, how to make the most of the universal year seven? Slow down. The energy of the seven is slow, deep, soul shifting, and need time for gradually digestion and integration. Blazing forward business as usual is a receipt for some hard lessons to come into play. Think of 2023 as a stable order retreat from our usual duties to study, research, and work on project that will ultimately pay off. After giving a generous during the, um, the year 2022, which was the sixth university year, we may enter 2023 feeling slightly fatigued and energetically spent because 2022 was about, um, the six is about love, healing, family, people close to you. So with the deep, um, you getting closer, strengthening the relationship with people in your family or friends or uncovering um, or letting people go that you see are not fighting on your level that has happened. Especially if you, there are some people that were in a personal year nine in 2022 and those people for sure have let go a lot of people. The nine is all about letting go and making way for the new things coming to completion in the nine year a lot of people also come to you to advise the, the nine is like the teacher alex may i ask a couple of questions yeah. so just to see if i'm hearing everything good and and correct in 2020 or to 20 or was it 2022 that was a six yeah and so that was people learning to come back together and establish your relationships again. And I'm very paraphrasing. And then now we're in a seven, which is that spirituality, that kind of taking that reserved time and going out into nature. Do you think that that's a part of what people are referring to as the grand awakening? Well, that's a part of it. Yes, that has to do a part of it because like this year also, I, what I'm seeing, a lot of old methods that has been hidden is going to come back to light. Like a lot of people now are in the electrical culture, which uh, with the energy of the earth that the fruits and vegetables are getting bigger. So a lot of people I see is go into that direction. Um, this year, um, yes, this year, uh, what, because... It's not now that I'm awake of being studying the, the spiritual or the conspiracy world, um, but compared to 10 years ago, looking at now, I'm seeing more people asking questions, especially this year. A lot of people are seeing the media, how it is, how it's all controlled. It's few, just a narrative to get the people right up. And like this year, also the BLM organization was exposed. I was speaking against it. But now the people are uh, seeing it. So everything this year, the seven also has to do with um, revealing. Things were in the dark coming to the light, truth coming to the light. And a few days ago, Mel Gibson had a documentary about, that's called Sound of Freedom. And it was about uh, human trafficking, child trafficking, which is one of the biggest business of the biggest business on this planet that um, they're behind the scenes and the thing worldwide that a lot of people don't know about. So those type of things the, with the umbrella Pro network, all of that are gonna come to light. And with, um, so this year I see with the seven, a lot of people gonna have spiritual awakening. And it was also a few days ago, well, a few weeks ago on 18th of June, there was a spike in the Schumann resonance that nobody has seen before, like geometric pattern. And the day that it took place was one 
eight six, and that for me is source number, prime creator, God number, the one six eight. That's the golden ratio. So that was showing me source that hey, um, yeah, there's a change coming. The energy is gonna go way up. So this year also it is shown to yeah, we have to be grounded. But um, with the um, how you say with the number is showing me yeah, that's the golden ratio. Um, or it's mm -hmm. also known as the fingerprint of God. Sorry. Can you repeat that again? What's the what's the golden number? What's the number of God is there? What oh, is yeah. it? Yeah, for me, what I see, for example, in um, the, it's known as the Fibonacci numbers. There's a pattern that goes in, in our DNA, in the plants, and also in our Milky Way, the pattern. And the, it starts with um, one, it's 1 1.618. It's known as the golden ratio or the Fibonacci numbers. And from there, I can see the I just, in the universe. I just wrote it down and it does I, I guess I've never read that or I was I never got into numerology so this really is kind of new to me speaking with you I really am learning and when I write that number down it's like you can even feel something coming off of it yeah that's the number sequence for this um, our DNA, the plants, the, the planet, this whole, whole Milky Way. And you see it's, it's a pattern in, in the whole thing. So it's showing me there's a higher being, intelligent being that has put his, her fingerprint on everything. So there's a higher being that is, through that is showing me there's a higher being behind it, which is the prime creator. So when you make something, you're going to put your sign on it. So well, it has its sign on it in numbers. That's wild. So Alex, I have to tell you, for me in particular, I, there's probably not anybody else who might feel this way, but it's got a lot of my birthday numbers in it. Interesting. My birthday is actually, and I'll say it, it's not like the government doesn't know my birthday. Um, <laughs> it's my birthday is August August 6, so 8, 6, 1981. So like there's, I know it's not the same numbers, but it's interesting how there's a, this is just me having fun. <laughs> no, I see you, you have the numbers there. You, you have them, you have all the numbers. Not, it, I, okay. I thought you were gonna say it was because what I think with the opposite of June, 18th of June, the next one in combination with that numbers would be 16th of August. Oh. 16th of August. Okay. Which is the 168. So I'm expecting on that day also energy to go up right after the, they call it the Dragon's Gate or the Lion's Gate. No, Lion. Yeah, the Lion's Gate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, so, so August 16th, people, everybody remember that August 16th, I'm going to write it down. <laughs> yeah, the energy on this, the energy right now is going to be the highest on this year is going to be in September, because September is a universal month seven, and we are in a year, um, universal year seven. So the energy is going to be the highest there. And in October, it's the eighth universal month. So here's another key. What uh, makes sure in that time you're concentrating on yourself, reflecting on yourself, and working on your heart desire, um, especially also leading going into October, because what you do in October, which is the eighth universal month, is going to be amplifying for next year, because next year we're going to be in the eighth universal year. So what you do in October is going to be amplifying next year. So it's good to be, you know, make sure you're doing something that's your heart desire or um, your dreams, whatever, focusing on your creativity, talent, focus on that. That's yeah. funny that you say that, Alex. So I'm doing another small event at the end of September, September 30th, and it's a charity event. I'm planning it, hosting it type thing. And I already today, 
in today, I decided I went, and all of October is me. Me, what I love, what I want to do, get back to my writing, all that, like I'll work for other people and do all this great stuff. But I decided in this, in today, October is all mine. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting that you say that. Yeah, so you're going with the flow, you're going with the energy. So yeah, you have to do that. You're, so you're doing good, actually. You have to focus on yourself in October, what you want to do, your creativity, talent, whatever it is, what you feel called to focus on that. Because next year, you're going to be doing more of it. More things going to pop up. This is, it's an amplifying. You know, that month is going to amplify for next year. And Excellent. Also, that you, that um, 14 of October is also, I think, an eclipse that day, which is also going to start something else. So, going to lead it to 8th of April, um, to 8th of April 2024, which is going to mark an X in the US. But that's another one. Yeah. Is, I mean, that the net, so is that the, remember that was what, 2017? When the first line came, so yeah. April four, April eighth yeah. of twenty four is going to be, oh yeah. wow, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be interesting because um, next year, so this year is all about in uh, reflective, um, reflecting on self, inner strength, look at your heart desire, look what uh, what you're doing is good for yourself, nurturing for your soul. Um, 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 do things, do, doing some deeper learning. So that's all maybe taking a retreat to uncovering yourself, go more in nature. So that's all that has to do with the seven. But next year is preparing us for next year. Next year with the eight, uh, it's all about standing in your power. Um, so yeah, standing in your power and material and wealth. So next year with what is happening, I'm seeing it's going to be and that year also because, okay, you in numerology, you have one till nine cycle. That's how the cycle runs, one to nine. But in that cycle, you have another cycle. It's called the transitional cycle. And that um, runs, it starts with eight, nine, and then one. So that's the transitional cycle. And next year, we're going to go to a big transitional cycle, which is going to be three years. It's going to be oh, the whole world. This is for the whole world. The universal year is for the whole world, which is going to be requiring us to stand in our power um, or be walked on. So it's going to be requiring the whole world to stand in their power. And maybe there's going to be, I see, with it's going to be fighting with the wealth but at the end, the wealth is going to be transferred to the people. But there's going to be some fighting for the wealth because the elite are trying to um, establish the, the great reset. But I don't think that's going to go as they want to. Not for long. It's going to crash out. And 2025, it's going to be, we're going to be in the nine universal year. And that's going to be required of the world of everybody to let things go which is things or people that's holding you back that's not on your wavelength so it's all about the whole world letting go structure things teaching all false things that there's no service more to humanity and then in 2026 which will be going to be in a new year starting the new um nine year cycle which is all about establishing a good foundation, fresh start, and starting new things that benefit humanity, working in cooperation, and um, yeah, and not killing the planet, and working in cooperation with the nature. So, but yeah. but that's gonna that's gonna be at the end of the transitional cycle. The eight and the nine is going to be very important here. So that's going to be 2024 and, and nine to overcome. You have to overcome that then for the one to come, which is 26. So Alex, may I ask, so we're in the seven, all of us collectively, you know, regardless of what your personal number is, all of us are also experiencing the seven. 
So how do you feel, Alex, that let's say those in power, those that still rule in a lot of ways, like the human trafficking stuff, which I'm, I'm happy more are going to understand that that has never stopped. And that is always the hottest commodity, right? Oh, yes. So do you think that what I refer to as like the 3D density, the 3D negative, heavy, the rule, the control, the fear, do you think that that seems to be working even harder during a seven year where everybody's supposed to feel safe to reflect and go into nature and feel like they can explore new ideas. Do you feel like it's like trying to snuff that out? Does, am I making sense? Um, well, it, it, it depending if, for, it depending on the person, if like, for example, um, last year I was in a personal year seven. So I was already going through that energy reflect on a personal level in combination with the sixth universal year, which is deep reflection on myself and also on my family, which I went to deeper understanding how everything and how they act the way they do and everything. So I already went through it and I worked on myself. Now, if I didn't work on myself, then this year I will have a harder time people that don't do that, they're going to get more challenges. And you're going to see it. Some people are going to act out, out of, um, when, for example, people that are, um, you are in a person year three. So it's all about self-expression and your creativity and communication with people. And there's some people that's also in a person year three, but they're not, expressing their truth self they're expressing lie and having a false mask so they're not really on their path so you're gonna see also in this year it's gonna expose who's who if they're really truthful or not you know and boundaries is important for you to protect your energy that i saw with a lot of people um with the life path six thirty two six or sixes they have problem with setting boundaries because i understand they feel good when they help people but a lot of times they forget about themselves and you have to set yourself first before you can assist another person another person and, and if the person don't want to learn you need feedback so if you don't have feedback it's not going to work then you have to let the person go and they will learn on their own um in their own time and afterwards they will come for you when they're ready or otherwise they have to learn them another way, the hard way. Because I actually, Alex, it's funny that you bring that up because you know I'm a six in a lot of ways. And for years, my guides were trying to stop me, you know, like, hey, and finally, Alex, I think it was this past April or May, it all made sense that I, I now have a conviction within me that I'm not gonna help anyone unless they ask for it. And if I have discernment, if I should or not, cause I can just fall right into line and forget about myself cause I'm so generous with the help. And I will say the transformation <laughs> that finally my poor guys, they, for years, they were saying, please knock it off <laughs> and finally it, just sunk into this thick brain of mine you know um it's hard when you because i i use the term humanity taking care of humanity and i really am trying to pronounce that in a way of that's how we should live and that's how we're going to live eventually when we get to that one year and that we're building that foundation of humanity helping humanity but it's so hard to be like, only a few of us understand that. <laughs> yes, that's the thing, no? Like there's a lot of people when I mention about the human trafficking, there's a lot of people that I've triggered, but um, 
But why I say that is because that's the biggest um, business on this planet. And it, when more people awake to that truth, to that awareness, if everybody on this planet awake to what's really going on, then the Draco reptilians and the people that's working for them, they don't have the control anymore. We are more than them. Then their game is up. Everything stops. And we can really... Um, that that thing has been going on for decades, ages, the, with the trafficking and shit, and that everything can stop, and then we can start from fresh and build from a solid, um, uh, a, a just foundation, not corrupt foundation like everything. So I'm seeing a lot of things are going to fall in the future for us to build a new, you know. But with the human trafficking, that's one of the biggest thing with the Andrano Chrome Network, with the underground um, dumps that's, um, that you have around the, the planet, which I know all of it is going to come to light slowly. And um, yeah, people that haven't done their research, yeah, then they're they not, they're going to have a harder time or shock when they see that or come if they know that if when it comes to light. But it's going to come to light. When I don't know. It's everywhere, too. I mean, I have personal experience not because i was being trafficked but because i knew of things happening in my hometown and this was the 90s so oh. i mean it's been around and it's never gone away i i believe though as i got older i realized not everybody grew up like i did you know when you're a kid and you grow up in different areas that's all you know and then all of a sudden I get out and I go, oh, the majority of you don't know that this stuff happens. So, yeah, yeah it's I the awareness needs to come about all of it, because that is that is never, ever gone away. Yeah. Never. And the government agent, some government agency with the one that in America, they take the children away and they put it faster. That agency, I found out that's also corrupt. So there's a lot of things that need to be to come to the light and the people and so the game stops and they stop playing the game and a lot of people need to go to jail. But that is gonna happen. I, this year is not over yet. I'm expecting more things to come out this year that's gonna shock people and it's gonna take us for next year, go into the three year transition to for everybody to stand in their ground and stand and their power and take our power back because it was yeah been misabused for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. Alex, will you go into some of that? Would you mind? I mean, I'm the one posting this. So what do you think? Because I I feel I've been trying to prepare people for that too. I say we stand and we're gonna stand in our power, but getting there is gonna be rocky for individuals, for the collective to learn that we can. I mean, it's like we, everybody forgot that we can, and it's going to feel like, oh, this is a must now. I have to stand. And I do this symbol to be like a stake in the ground of this is who I am, the great I am that we are. It's, it's going to come. I don't know the time exactly. I can tell you when we're going to, but source is going to show us when the time. Now this year is all about reflecting ourselves changing the diet working on your temple there's four aspects to the health you have the mental um, you have the emotional physical and spiritual so a lot of people this year is going to be focusing on those four aspects for the health for the healing mind healing and next year what i can tell you is then feeling the when the eight energy is going to kick in it's going to be in march and of April when the eclipse kick in. Um, what I can see is something coming out that's going to be required or igniting people to stand up against the reset. Mm -hmm. so something is going to come, source is going to be a light. We're going to get something going to show us when the time is to stand up. So that's what I'm seeing. Excellent. What about, for, so we're in July now, July 2023. Do you see anything happening in July, August, the September, October? Because uh, 
for dealing with, we know, we have no idea what's true from fiction to any of it. Well, now this, this month that we're in is a transformational month because we are, um, this is a universal um, five month. And I also I'm seeing this month, it started already with on the 4th of July with the Sound of Freedom documentary coming in, coming out about the human trafficking. I know that um, Carrie Cassidy of Project Camelot, she did a review of it. Uh, she said they didn't win deep into it. But it's good for the normal people that don't know anything about that. So they know, okay, there's something going on here. There's really um, a network or humans and ch children being trafficked. So it's good for the people that don't have no idea about it. But it goes deeper than that. And that, I think, is going to come afterwards. It's going to come slowly with the caverns that uh, is around the world and i know i heard i've talked with different um, people and i know there's things being done about it um, i know there was an article and i confirm it with spiritual people that there were a few children being rescued in new york there was a tunnel underground tunnel i read the article on um, before it's news.org and apparently there are a few children there are a few thousands of children that they rescued but Due to them never seeing the sun, some of them could have not taken the sun, so they had to get another procedure to get the children out because their skin were too sensitive for the sun. Oh so, my! Yeah, but there, this everything is happening as it should. It's all divine, so that is also getting me through it. And what is motivating me is finally I'm seeing people asking more questions, looking for knowledge, going deeper. And working on self, I'm seeing a lot of more spiritual-based businesses coming up right now. It's a time for it. We're going to go in that direction. So I'm clearly seeing awakening happening. So we live in a very interesting time. We're going to experience and see things I've never seen before. But it's all in divine because I'm, I've seen in the past there's a lot of divine intervention that has happened that has led us to where we are now. Because the elite had big plans for us already in 2016 and before that, but it didn't take place. It didn't happen. You know, if it did happen, we're not here right now. But it did. I agree. I think this is, for me personally, I feel like this is the first time, even in human cycles here on the earth, that we have the opportunity with the energies here to literally not end the earth, not have a great flood or a disaster. We can just keep going and evolving and turn into the new earth of humanity, taking care of humanity. Alex, can I ask though, so that X over the United States is going to be April 8th or the 8th of April, that X, for someone who doesn't live in the United States, or even what is your interpretation of what that represents? Well, I've heard, I've done research on it. There's different people with different perspective on it. Apparently, um, U.S., if I go deeper with it, U.S. is the original continent of creation, not Africa. And apparently is going through the seven Salem cities, Salem, Egypt, in the, in the, in the United States. It has to do with Egypt. Apparently they found, well, I saw photos of the Egyptian like things and pyramid in Arizona. And this, I read a lot of um, information on that a person in the early 90s that went there and found Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon and a big place on the ground where they can house about 20,000 people. So America has a deep, deep history that a lot of people don't know about. And what I'm, I'm interpreting it is, is um, the X is marking the end of the cabal control because America was the military power of the cabal, London being the financial power and Vatican being the religious power of them, the three section of control. 
So the X is saying that their control is going to be ending. And also right now in the U, um, US, I saw with um, their, one of the other agenda is to make people genderless. Um, there's no man, woman, just birth in person and non birth in person. It's stupid. But I'm against, I've been speaking against the tranny agenda, the LGBTQ shit agenda. Um, um, there because look, if you're 18, 21, you do whatever. But if you are gonna push it on the children, then we have a problem. The children are the future, and from zero when they're born till seven, they're in the tapestry, state, easily programmed. So that's why they're going after them to program them where there's more than one gender and this ideology that's based on no science. Um, and with what's happening in America right now with the bootlighting. That's showing me also um, that the people are um, fed up with that, the trans so the people are finally speaking and showing their, okay, you're gonna go into that, pushing that on the children, thinking men can be women and shit. Okay, we're not gonna support you financially. So now the company is going deep down. So now it has ignited something in America to band the people together to, for the companies pushing that ideology on the children. Okay, like Target was one, they lost a lot. Um, what I understand, billions. So if it's showing me, that's another thing that has shown me there's a weakening happening. If the people they did and the people didn't react, okay, they're like, okay, they're just gonna accept it. Well, no, there's a lot of people I saw in the US speaking against it. Also, they're trying to push the critical race theory. And it's all things to divide the people so, and I saw a lot of black American talk against the um, critical race theory. So that's good. Um, they're um, pushing he heavy for division, but it's not going to work. Now I'm seeing if people are starting to react to it, starting speaking up, expressing themselves. So it's, it's, it's good. I'm seeing a very positive transformation is, is happening, you know, finally. It's not happening as fast as I want, but it's happening. It's going as a rate. So I'm satisfied with it. Well, and I do have to say, I, it's interesting because I, you know, of course I'm, I'm an American. Um, my ancestors were on the Mayflower. I mean, I've been here forever, um, bloodlines wise. Um, and we are a very fascinating group of people because even though we're so big and we have different areas of our country that are vastly different and culture and all sorts of stuff. And we have such a rich culture because if you really look at it, we all started, at least by the time I was growing up, we were accepting all the cultures. We just, we partied with everybody. It was cool, you know, that my age, the Gen Xers and, and below, I think what people forget often is that we're still American hands down. And that 1976 or that 1776 thing that we just celebrated on July 4th, a few days ago, that is very much in us. That is very much in us that, oh no, if you push it too far, we will do something about it. You, you see what I'm saying? So yes. the more you see the standard American kind of stand up and say, no, and the more you see that, I think the world could see a scope of, and it would be whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, Indians, it, it wouldn't matter. It would be all of us because we've now been rocking and rolling together for a very long time doing very well. So what they project on the screen is not the American reality at all. Yeah, no, I can see that, um, yeah. Yeah, the, well, the media is fully controlled, and it's not the American people, it's mostly the, the, the government, you know. Yeah. The, oh, like right now, um, um, you can say France is going through their second revolution. There's a lot of things, protests happening in France that they don't really talk about. What this uh, France is going through their revolution right now, everybody's fed up with their prime minister, uh, which is corrupt and part of the WEF, World Economic Forum. Um, you have the Dutch one is the same one. 
Well, Alex, I actually, I was driving in the car yesterday and sometimes thoughts just come to you, you know? And I literally was thinking, whoa, if France starts, people, I guess, don't pay enough attention to France. France actually influences a lot of things that then start to transpire if we look at history. So I was driving in my car and I went, oh, wow, if France kicks this off, I bet you a bunch of us Americans are going to jump on board to that energy of we're done. So it's interesting that you brought that up because when there's the little, there are the small countries over there that people seem to just kind of dismiss, but France, Belgium, Holland, that the, the Netherlands area, uh, not, maybe not so much Sweden, but if they start doing what they have always done, more really jump on board. And I was like, oh my goodness, this might be a thing. <laughs> it, it is. I, it seems like the, I, the people in the Netherlands are, are fed up with the, um, the farmers. They elected a farmer, pro-farmer um, party but when I look into it, it's not really, but they didn't do the research. They fail, but they, yeah, because the, the party that says for the farmers was created through a marketing firm. And that marketing firm, clients, biggest clients is Monsanto and Bayer, which is been screwing the farmers a long time. So, it's a party claiming to be for the farmers, but your biggest client is Monsanto. So that doesn't make sense. But they didn't know. I think nobody know, knew about that. They don't know about Monsanto. So they went for the party and it's not going good. There's a big protest still in Holland with the farmers. The farmers are not backing down. So it's going to be more of that um, around the world. I see it. And um, it's going to be a change because we're more than them. You know, we just, if, I can give an example. It was in the neighboring island, the Curacao. The people there are more united. They're more angry people. I wouldn't want to live there, but they're um, not all of them. But they're very angry. But um, but their unity. And it was one time the government want. Um, I think they wanted to implement a tax thing, and nobody was um, agree with it. So what they did on that island, the island has more people living here, about 30,000 more. And everybody there on the island stopped working. Everybody on the island stopped working. They all cooperate and stop, and the government had to listen to them. You know, so it, it has to be something that everybody does together. You know, not just a group there. It, like there was one in um, Australia, there was a whole town that say no, to the mass thing, the, the convict restriction, and they couldn't do nothing because everybody band together. So it has I'm glad you bring that up, Alex, because so for me, I don't want fight. I there's not uh, I don't think there's a reason to fight. I think it is if we all as an individual stand for what we know is right as an individual, and then that person doesn't that. And for me, I don't see just America. I really do see oh my goodness, what if this entire world, because unfortunately, even though we're all from different locations, countries, economics, it really doesn't matter. None of us are the elite. None of us are that money and that control that's really enslaving all of us in many ways. Like Americans, we work 40, 50, 60 hour weeks for what? is to be to have debt i mean we're all under so i know it's kind of relative compared to america and africa or the west indies where you are or holland in the north i know it's all kind of relative but could you imagine if something so big happened that we all as humans just said no like that's it. They would they would crumble in an instant. Oh yes, yes. 
But that's the thing that we have to have more people awake and aware of what's really going on for them when you say, oh, today or tomorrow, okay, everybody, we're going to band together and say enough. And um, for example, what you mentioned about the financial system and how the bank system works, that also needs to change because they're just printing out of nothing. It's not backed by nothing. Now I know Russia is backed by gold. They have another standard now. That's why they're attacking um, Russia. And I know, for example, Gaddafi, why Obama and Clinton took him out is because he wanted to put Africa, complete Africa, back by gold. And that will make that Africa currency will go higher than the pound and euro. So that's why, that's the biggest reason. That's why they take him out. Not because he's a dictator. Well, he's a dictator, but his country was prosperous, was doing very good. The people were happy. Now the country is into shit. Oh, it's... There's still a slave trade happening there right now. There, I saw black people in chain there. So this, the country went disaster. Exactly. Since Obama and Clinton um, interviewed. But they were planning to do with the gold. But I think what is going to happen, we're all going to be backed by gold in the future. Things are going to change. They're going to be backed by gold and not. And, we, and the central bank is not going to be existing anymore because the Federal Reserve, for example, in the US, there's nothing fed about it. It's a private. Same with Aruba. The Aruba is central bank of Aruba, but it's not from Aruba. It's private. It's from the Rockefeller. So those are going to need to be eliminated in the future. And it's going to come that we're not going to be needing uh, uh, interperson in between for our wealth and money exchange and shit because um yeah they're fully corrupt they're fully corrupt but that's gonna come to light slowly do you alex where you know in your island do do many people use bartering like i can drive you to the store if you will uh babysit my kid something like that do they exchange that way with not money, but uh, oh, yeah. I well, not like that, more with fruits and things. If we have fruits, hey, I have one fruit here, uh, we exchange fruits or something like that. You can exchange material, I guess, or service too. I can see that too. Yeah, yeah, even that too. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, enough, enough Americans do that. And I've been trying to, because I live like that. And so if I need something, it's usually some kind of bartering. I'm doing some kind of barter. Um, And I've been trying to talk to everybody on the channel about start doing that a little bit, but nobody talks to each other anymore. They just get on Amazon and buy things or they think they don't have, I don't know, that they're not worthy to ask for help or to offer a service. I don't know, but I feel before the full flip of the money starts happening, and this is a few years from now, but the full, you know, the changeover of the money, I feel it's because a lot of us are going to go, yeah, I don't need your money. I'm good. Because we're going to be utilizing more how to work in a small community better, and it'll just keep growing and growing and growing. And then that'll eventually have to flip more of the money I can see that. I can see having community base that you don't need money. Everybody there has their own job, you can say. Uh, want to take care of the plants, want to the water, um, want to do creative work or build um, um, the, the electrical culture. Everybody can have a different tech there, want to check. Which sounds the chickens, the chicken. It sounds very socialist or communist, but it's more I'm I'm saying we really are able to take care of one another and not lack anything. So then we don't have to depend on any government that, to support us. Yeah. Because like you said, especially here in America, um I, it's funny, you know, we pay our bills, we get our paychecks from work when it's none of it's real. 
you can't be hundreds of trillions of dollars in debt and think that the money that's passing through your hands is actually real. It's not. So I try to live differently of if I go in and paint your child's bedroom and you give me a nice haircut and for exchange, that's more real to me than whatever they might try to do with crypto, money, this, that. You see what I'm saying? So I think that's going to be a little bit of a layer on top of, I do agree, there are more spiritual businesses and spiritual practices that will be more lucrative financially in the future. Yes, let's go in that direction with more um, spiritual base. And yeah, I can understand that um, people doing exchange with fruits or service. It, um, it can go in that direction. Um, I think that's going to be more in the future, more of working together and not in competitive way, trying to push one another down. We, by working together, we have a faster progress. You know, as a humanity, as in a whole. So that's what, um, yeah, that's what I'm seeing is going to happen um, in the future. This year, I see it's also good for if people want to take it to an uh, extra level, where they, this one, they need more courage for it. If you take, for example, mushroom ceremony, magic mushroom ceremony, or ayahuasca, or San Pedro, to go deeper to enhance their spiritual ability or their insight, their vision. This is a good year to, to do that. Oh, this year. This year, yes. Because okay. we were, my business partners and I, we were talking about doing like a three-day retreat. And one of those days would be a like what they refer to as a hero's dose um, for the people at the retreat. Um, but I don't know if we can get that in by this year. Maybe, maybe November. Maybe that's when I'll do it to get it before the year ends. Well, Alex, um, this has been lovely. Can you leave us with any sound advice or something to, you know that we should lock into our memory? Um. Just no, just this year, the most important is this year is to just focus on yourself, focus on your heart desire, work on yourself. Try to eliminate the processed food, try to eat more greens, more fruits, um, do some deeper learning. If you want to take a retreat, um, take time for yourself, just fo focus on self. Um, and don't fall into the fear, turn the television off because they control people with the fear. And um, yeah, and next year is going to be um, where we are going to be standing in our power. But just know everything as it's happened is all divine. We asked to be here. We are here for a reason. We're going to experience a transition on this planet. So that's what makes me exciting with the truth, what was in the dark coming out to the light. And we're going to rise above it and then make a solid, um, good foundation for the future so um what i can say is no fear and work on self because we are be seeing things on this planet we never seen before and um we're in a brink of transition so um yeah we're in a good uh, is we're in a special time so i'm excited there's no fear yeah i'm excited too and alex i'm happy that you chose to be here now that you chose to be born and going through this with us. I'm really, I, I feel honored. I feel really good because when I get to talk with you, it reminds me that yes, there are others out there. So I'm, I, I'm happy you chose to be here with me and us and also deliver this wonderful message. So thank you. You're welcome. It was awesome. And um, yeah, just no fear. I'm happy that we cross paths. We cross paths for a reason. You know, all is divine. All was planned before. We're just playing it out, you know. So it's, it's cool. That's what I found out. We're just playing it out. So um, yeah, it's exciting. So no fear. Focus on self and just know everything happened for a reason. You may not understand it now, but you will understand it later.
Definitely. Well, thank you, Alex and beautiful stars. Thank you for listening. Keep shining, spread Alex's message, go to his YouTube channel, the Ganja Shaman, subscribe, bring his bell folks. I mean, make sure that you're in, in contact with Alex. Um, he does put out great stuff and everyone keep shining. I know we kind of went into a lot of different areas, but we're in 2023 and then we're headed into even more. So I am happy that all of you beautiful stars decided to be born as well. So thank you, Alex. And I will be sounding off and seeing you guys uh, sometime soon. <laughs> Bye everyone.